by sun sign what everyone can expect from these eclipses, whether or not they're a Leo or an Aquarius. All right? Okay, great. Thank uh, you so much for um, bringing in all that motivational movement energy. I love it. <laughs> I was like, sitting there, I was like, yeah, just let her go, man. She's got a lot of stuff to say and yeah, wonderful I'll... energy to give out. <laughs> so um, I, I have a couple questions or yeah. a couple, maybe just a recap, a mirror back, if you will. Um, you were saying that the solar eclipse is around August 1st. It is on August 1st, yes. And it's usually, the, the eclipse, the first one is usually around the new moon. It's, a and solar eclipse is always a new moon. Okay. Always. It's an astronomical fact. Okay. And then the, and then two weeks later is the lunar eclipse that falls on the full moon. Yes. And between, you know, those two times, there's going to be a, a period of shifts and changes because of the amount of, um, I guess, planetary influences it has on this planet. Can you explain more about how that works out with the, the planets sure. and how it affects us uh, and everything? I'll do my best. Okay. It's very <laughs> difficult to do something like that without a visual aid, okay? There is um, a path that the moon makes around the Earth, right? And then there is a path that the sun, uh, that, excuse me, that the Earth makes around the sun. All right? You follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tell me if I lose you because it's kind of difficult to explain this without a visual, but I'm trying. So we have two separate paths in the sky, okay? What happens during an eclipse is that those two paths intersect, okay? And the intersection of those two paths open up this dramatic portal of energy with power I can't even I can't even begin to explain it, it it just it's as if this whole flash of of light comes comes into our our being and you feel it this is why during eclipse times there it's known to be a time where there are more earthquakes and natural disasters the earth literally feels the effects of the shifts these two um uh, the paths, they, they intersect and it does affect the earth. So imagine how it will affect us as people because w the imprint of planetary energy is on all of us and that is how planets affect character development and our, and our nature and our choices in life and our life development. It's because we are very much affected by that planetary energy through the imprint. So... Um, we have this this whole interaction going on in in the cosmic sky, and that's how we feel it. That's how the energy becomes so shaky on the earth. And in olden times, way back in Babylonia, ancient Chaldeans, they used to think that eclipses were always very negative. There was a very horrible feeling around eclipses, and they always predicted terrible events. And I hope that the, your listeners don't carry that view. Because even though eclipses will sometimes bring events of tragedy or sadness or ending, it is also a time when you can have incredibly phenomenal events happen in your life. It always depends on your birth chart, your personal cycle, and your personal level of evolution and what you're going through. Mm. But it is an unstable energy. Yes, and I was just so wonderfully blessed this full moon of actually receiving my moon around that period in time, and I felt great. It was, um, you know, relatively no pain whatsoever, and just this really, really relaxed feeling. Um, and I have in my last couple of weeks ago, I did a show on the Menses moon cycle, and that conflict that sometimes women have um, with feeling the power, excuse me, the power and the energy of the moon through their body and not knowing how to, <clears throat> uh, I guess, channel that energy in more productive ways and to manifest in, like, a severe amount of pain and mood swings and stuff like that. But um, I think it's very powerful, even as a woman, as in, in our connection to the moons and the cycles and how we're probably um, really affected, too, by that portal of energy that will open up. Um, and I'm wondering... What uh, types of activities can we do um, to, I guess, maybe tune into this power in a very conscious way? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, 
I would say try to do anything that centers you and helps you regain your sense of balance because um, especially with the solar eclipse, we will all have an urge to act and to move forward and to do things because it's new opportunities that, that suddenly come up into our life. And with the lunar eclipse, it will be very emotional. So both times will be uh, uh, moments when we really need to ground ourselves and center ourselves. So anything uh, like, like yoga or stretching or, or a little meditation, just taking some time to be alone and, and journaling, all of that can help you with the reflection that you'll need to do around the, the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. And, and I always tell clients that, you don't want to make any dramatic decision in the days before or after the eclipse because the energy is so unstable. And even though you're going you know to what? want to... I'm sorry. Okay. I just realized that there's two cars on the line. Okay, continue finishing. Oh, okay. What you well, I don't want people to make dramatic decisions when, uh, when it's eclipse time. I want you to hold back and let the dust settle. And then it will become very clear to you what's about to happen in your life. And once those changes happen, they're irreversible because that's the, the energy of eclipses. Now, I don't know if you want me to jump right into callers or if you want me to go through the well, uh, eclipses through the signs. That's up to you. Oh, um, actually, you know, I think, um, let's see. We'll, we'll take these two callers and then we'll, we'll go towards the signs. Um, but also, um, before we take the callers, um, I'd like the callers to just... When they talk, you know, we're only we're going to give you a certain amount of space, but you know, know your intention, know your comment, and um, you know, hopefully, um, Maria can help help you out. So I'll take the seven, uh, the nine five one caller on the air. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Okay, what is uh, your question or comment for us today and our show about the um, August eclipses? Okay, um, I wanted to know if you can tell me how the um, eclipse will affect me as far as romance is concerned. Okay, hi. Uh, can I have your first name? It's Laron. Laron. Now, Laron, do you know your birth date and time? Seven twenty-eight seventy-one twelve forty-seven p.m. Linwood, California. Okay, so that's. Seven twenty eight seventy one twelve forty seven p.m. and I missed your location. Lamwood, California. Ma'am, can you spell that? L y n w o o d, Lanwood. Oh, Linwood, California. Okay, I apologize. Um, I am bringing up your chart right now. Okay. And I just need one second to. I've, have you ever seen your birth chart before, Loran? Never. Oh, okay. Well, oh my goodness, you are. Uh, you're a five-degree Leo sun, and you have a Libra moon, okay? And you also have Libra rising, and I don't know if that means gobbledygook to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but basically, I can see how you have incredible energy for to be recognized, to be noticed, to be loved, okay? Recognition is very important to you. Being appreciated in a relationship is very important to you. When someone doesn't appreciate you, it, it could be the kiss of death in a relationship. And with that Libra moon, you, you very much give uh, a lot of yourself and put a lot of yourself into your relationship. Now, this eclipse, interesting, the, the, the solar eclipse affects you and the lunar eclipse affects you, okay? Now, your question was about relationships right. and romance. Now, right. you have Mars, which is the planet of energy, at about 20 degrees Aquarius in your fourth house of home. Mars rules your seventh house of committed partnerships. So my first question is, do you have a committed relationship that you're in right now? No, I don't. That's okay. why I'm asking. Okay. No. Mars, the contact that the lunar eclipse makes, it suggests that there's something going on in the family with a, with a partner in the family and... If you are supposed to meet someone, it's going to be an introduction through a relative, through a family member, okay? So there is, there's a lot of different action happening for you that highlights more your home and family and career life direction than specifically romance, okay? okay. But because you are a Leo and because all Leos can be affected relationship-wise by this eclipse, it is possible that somebody will come into your life. But, again, if someone does come into your life, it will be through family, uh, some, some kind of an introduction, 
um, 